Hey folks, welcome back to this playlist. This is uh, editing Rico GR raw files or any raw file for that matter. And in this uh, episode, we're looking at um, the value proposition, the freebie um, Apple Photos, which is built into uh, Max. This is the app and uh, you can look at libraries like this and you can create folders and stuff as for professional use probably not going to be satisfactory for professionals um, we're going to look at some editing tools in a minute but uh, it doesn't do lens corrections it doesn't do dehazing it does do cropping and straightening and you can do all the stuff like tone curves contrast saturation shadows highlights and uh, white balance and things like that and um, it does have some healing tools and as of right now this is uh, June 2025 Apple uh, are slowly getting into the AI game uh, they've been way behind so far um, Adobe Lightroom is on the uh, the cutting edge of AI within uh, photo editing stuff and they've been really good and I'm not just talking about giving prompts to create new AI images I'm, I'm talking about AI tools to actually improve the existing um, existing photos so Apple have just like started to migrate the regular healing tools to get rid of spots and things like that and uh, get those into uh, the AI business but uh, let's take a look at stuff um, where it really shines here I think if you're a casual user it's good at organizing your files you, you can create albums and uh, it's uh, good at creating these virtual albums as well what they, what they call smart albums where you can set up criteria for searching for files and uh, you can do it on um, on data that's in the XF so it's in this in this instance um, I would say it's it's very good and quite comparable to the searching and filtering and cataloging capabilities of Lightroom what it can do with the files here and uh, one example would be this for example I'll just delete this for a second all this is is a smart folder so deleting this won't um, smart album so deleting this won't delete any actual images but um, I have a lens that is a 14 millimeter lens that I've used it on a couple of cameras and now let's say I want to search for all the images based on that lens focal length well I can go over here onto albums and say uh, I want to create a new smart album here and uh, we'll call this 40 millimeter lens and uh, then you say it's got to match these conditions and it will search the whole library so it's going to say photo length uh, focal length is uh, like that and then we'll just change that to 40 there like that and you can see here it's found 137 matching items that were shot with a lens with that focal length so that's pretty cool being able to do stuff like that and you'll be able to create filters based on your cameras brands lenses and things like that and uh, also just add your own real folders and import things into your own real albums uh, so it's it's very useful in that sense then when you're looking at your uh, your actual files, you can see we're looking at a raw file here. So it does support raw files from many different types. It will have no problems whatsoever um, editing uh, Rico raw files because they, they use the, uh, the universal DNG format just like Leica do. And, uh, it, but I've tested this with um, Sony RAW files, Canon RAW files, and um, Panasonic RAW files without any real problems. Uh, let's edit an image now. We're going to click on Edit up here. Up here. And uh, this is an image with, without any changes. This is, uh, you can't click on re Reset Adjustments down here, but you've got different things. You've got this, this is a tab up here where this reveals this panel here for tabs. Then it's got some rudimentary filters here that would look like plugins and stuff like that to change how things look. And uh, it's very limited, as you can see. But it's okay. We'll go back to the original there. And then cropping here. So you can crop, you can straighten, you can rotate. And uh, you can do pretty much anything you can now with other stuff. Then on the cleanup tools, this is where Apple are trying to get into the AI business. 
this erase function here can um, it, it probably I'll, I'll do that in another image but uh, the erase function here can start to uh, do things like remove objects although it's not as good as what you can expect from Lightroom with its generative fill and things like that um, yeah that seems okay so let's go over to adjustments here you've got the usual stuff here we're going to adjust exposure and uh, bring down the highlights just a wee bit so we don't start blowing them out bring the shadows up and these are all just your basic adjustments which should be available in just about any photo editing software if i just bring our list back in here no actual area for lens corrections that i've been able to uh, to see we've got some vignetting that they can correct here you know you can put that up and down stuff like that but uh, no actual lens corrections and you can uh, you can play about with noise a little bit but there is no dedicated dehaze button uh crop and rotate yeah we can straighten yeah shadows highlights white balance all this stuff is available in this panel here uh exporting for print we'll get to that in a second because i forgot that from the previous video and uh, you've got your healing tools removing spots and stuff yes it can do that and it's just starting to get into ai tools apple release a new version of the uh, mac os uh, every uh, every October about late late September October and uh, these tools that come free with the OS will be changed and improved by then and I suspect that they are desperate now to get on the AI bandwagon so we're going to see more AI tools in the photographic software so moving on let's have a look at we go back to this and click done here get back to the image overview um now why would you want to be able to export for print well uh one good thing about apple just want to mention that if i wanted to print this this is the raw file this isn't a jpeg and i can print this straight away as it is now so i can go up here to the file menu and choose print and i can select how i want to print it i've got my printer up here mine is a canon ip 8750 six color print uh six color archival print uh printer and it is an a3 a3 plus actually and um, you can create paper profiles for it and stuff like that and then you've got lots of different printing options so i do like printing from this and i have on occasion imported images into it so i could print them from uh, Apple Photos. Uh, just a word about the uh, import capabilities. It can keep your files in place if you want to manage the files yourself. Let's say you have an external disk with hundreds of thousands of files on and you want to keep them there and not on your main drive on your computer. You can prevent Apple Photos from trying to import all of these files into its own catalog and make a duplicate. You can keep them where they are it doesn't do uh, destructive edits it's the same as lightroom it does non-destructive edits to your files so you won't bugger anything up and uh, you can avoid duplicates if you choose to do so or you can if your hard disk is big enough or if you're not really a, a multi-thousand uh, photo editor then um, you can choose to import all of your photos and keep them in one place on your on your machine this of course, soft, this software is, is of course only available to Apple Mac users, and uh, not available to Windows or Linux. Uh, there are two other free options that are uh, Darktable and Raw Therapy. But let's just look at what um, I meant about and what I forgot from the previous video. Now, let's say I'm editing this now, and I'm happy with the edits and stuff in Adobe Lightroom. And I want to print it now. If I if I want to send it off for someone to someone to print, then I could export export it as the most uh, as the safest object in the full size with the minimum compression and send it off as a JPEG. But if it was something that was um, it was very important to keep the colors bang on, then JPEG might not be up to it because this is a 14-bit RAW file. JPEGs are 8-bit. Uh, with compression and some data does get lost and that might not be good for creating the best possible print so you can actually print to other formats and one of those formats 
is uh, if you export first like this and then go down to the export menu this tells you where you're going to export it to and down here we have ba, 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 there, your image format what you export to if you choose TIFF here you can actually choose a 16-bit TIFF so you get plenty of room within this file type to export all the data within a Rico DNG and that will be a better option and uh, you never know if you're going to send it away to be printed or upload it to a printing service they might allow you to upload these uh, bigger TIFF files because they are considerably bigger I, was, I suspect if I exported this image to a JPEG with uh, the minimum absolute minimum compression then it would probably end up being about 10 megabytes but the TIFF file will probably be about 80 megabytes we can just test that out actually I'm going to hit export now and I will get a TIFF version of this file on my desktop and it will actually keep the uh, the raw EXIF data so this is the file it's exported here I'm going to double click on that and it will show it in uh, the preview uh, the preview app there it is then if I hit the Im uh, the information tag here the information icon you can see in the EXIF data there's the TIFF file and IPTC EXIF uh, in general uh, about the actual file that 144 megabytes okay so that's quite a hefty file it's created but it's not got any uh, data loss it's a lossless uh, data image type and uh, you can't get a better copy than that so that is great but the application can also print directly itself uh, it's got a print module over here it's just yeah not my favorite I've printed with this before and um, yeah I don't think this is uh, very intuitive I'm sure it's uh, better uh, when you actually study it learn it take the time to to work with it I'm, I'm sure it's probably better than uh, Apple photo for printing but yeah uh, I haven't really spent too much time with it I like the simplicity I'm going to quit this now I like the simplicity of Apple photos and I can always import this image now into Apple photos and use the print module in that to create a print on my local printer uh, so yeah those are the comparisons with um, Apple photos and just so we can see it working here this is that raw file image that we edited and uh, this too can be exported export one photo you can also export the unmodified original photo but so there we can now export this image and uh, we can choose the type here JPEG uh, so you can do that but you can also do it to a TIFF file and say I want 16 bit we'll do this one more time here see what this end uh, see how this ends up being uh, size wise so we're going to export that uh, go like this it's asking where do I want to put it I'm going to put it to the desktop like that and there is our file there and we're going to get info for that file now and wow that one is a whopping 200 and, uh, 253 megabytes so a quarter of a gig for that file there uh, so I'm expecting this is going to be absolutely gorgeous and it's nice it's okay so that was Apple Photos um, plenty of editing tools uh, no local edits uh, that means um, no masks no layers uh, Adobe Lightroom doesn't have layers either but it does have plenty of masks uh, so local edits are difficult or impossible with Apple photos but if you just want to do some general edits to lift your shadows reduce your highlights and things like that maybe alter the colors a little bit uh, and have great um, file management Apple Photos might be the way to go. Free software if you own a Mac. Okay?
that's it for now. Talk to you later.